Today, I want to show you how to edit, retouch, and apply makeup to a portrait. So here is the original, and when we're done, we're going to have an image like this. How cool is that? All right, so for this particular image, you're going to learn how to remove blemishes, a nose ring, and more. Plus, you're going to do some color grading and some contrast adjustments. And then, of course, you're going to learn how to apply makeup, add some eyelashes, and even highlight the hair. So there's a lot to cover in this tutorial, and you're going to get all my pro tips in this as well. So to download this image, check out the description below for the link so you can practice what you learn. Hello, my name is Chris Parker, and it is my desire to help you elevate your photography and editing skills in GIMP. So if you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel so you can continue elevating your editing skills in GIMP. If you're ready, let's do it. The first thing I want to do is duplicate this layer, and I'm going to double click on the layer name and rename it Retouch, since that's the first thing we're going to do. So I'm going to grab my zoom tool with the letter Z, click and drag around this area of the image, and we have what appears to be the top of her bra here poking out through her shirt, so I want to remove that. So we can either do that with the heel tool or the clone tool. So I'm going to use the heel tool for this particular edit, and I'll explain why I use this over the clone tool as we retouch this image. So I'm going to grab my heel tool with the letter H. Now, as you may or may not know from other editing tutorials that I've done, the heel tool is going to take information from another part of the image, take those pixels, the pixel values, the colors, textures, contrast, all that information, and it's going to use it to cover up the area that you paint over. And then with the heel tool, it's going to blend those pixels together to give you a smooth, natural edit. Now, the clone tool is the opposite in that it's not going to blend. Instead, it's going to copy those pixels exactly to cover up that area. So sometimes one or the other will be better depending on what you're retouching, and you'll learn why in just a second. Now, in order to use a different part of the image, we need to give GIMP a reference point. So let's hold down our control key and then click right about here. Once you release, you're left with this circle, and it's going to follow your brush as you brush, and this is the pixels that GIMP is going to reference to cover up this area. Now, I'm going to grab my zoom tool here and zoom in because there's another thing we need to keep in mind when we are editing in this manner, and that is following any patterns visible in the area that we're retouching. So in this case, it looks like she has a cotton shirt on, and we can see those little weaves of the thread in there. We want to make sure we're going in the same direction. So it looks like it's mostly going up and down. So that's the brush stroke that I'm going to apply. And then I'm going to reference right here again, and then I'm going to paint up and down like so. And you can see that reference point is following where I apply that brush. Now I'm going to go ahead and re-reference another area over here because I did stop in that area. I don't want to continue applying that reference point over here if I stop because this area is much brighter than this area over here. Now you can resize your brush as well, and it's going to adjust your reference point at the same time. All right, so that area is done. Let's hold down our spacebar key so we can navigate to her nose. Now she has a nose ring. Also, I just want to say I have nothing against nose rings. My daughter has one, so if you have one, more power to you. We're just removing this nose ring so I can show you the differences between the clone and the heel tool. So I'm going to grab my zoom tool here again and zoom in a little bit closer so it's easier to see what we're retouching. And we're going to reference an area right underneath, so right here. So I have my heel tool, I have my reference point, and then I'm going to begin painting over this area right here. Okay, I'm going to change my reference point because the pixel values over here are darker than over here. So I need to undo that with Command or Control plus the letter Z. Now I'm going to get in here a little bit tighter, and the problem is 
GIMP is starting to reference the pixels in this area and it's much darker than here and this is becoming darker in the process. So if I undo that with Commander Control plus the letter Z, it will remove that and we are now going to switch to our clone tool. So grab that with the letter C. I'm going to make my brush size smaller and then Control click to add that reference point and then you can paint over that area. Now, sometimes you may have to go back with your heel tool to go over the area that you used the clone tool with to blend those pixels in. So the clone tool is better when you have harder edges like this, like the shape of our nose right here and right here. Plus we have different color values or brightness levels in these two points here. So the clone tool would work better in this situation. I'm gonna actually start over here and come in like so. So now it's not referencing any of these colors on the outside of that circle. It's just taking the pixels from that reference point and copying them exactly, which causes a small problem because now we see a pattern in that area. So I will go back with my heel tool with a smaller brush to paint inside of there to ensure that I'm not getting any detail from here. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the clone tool again with the letter C, a little larger brush, and then I'm going to use it on the inside right here along the edge, and then over on this side as well. Okay, back to the heel tool. So it's just a matter of going back and forth with the clone and the heel tool until you get the results that you want. So we have a hard edge right here again, so I'm going to use the clone tool here Problem is it's darker here than it is over here, but with the heel tool, you can then go ahead and blend in those edges so it looks much more natural. Again, back to the clone tool, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint out this part of the nose ring. Okay, really small with the heel tool here, so I can blend in this area a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go a little larger, new reference point, and just kind of clean it up right here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out. Okay, I need to go back and just touch this up a little bit more, just to blend it in. All right, let's zoom all the way back out right there. And then of course you can use the heel tool for the blemishes on the face. I find that the heel tool works perfectly in these situations, unless of course you're working along a hard edge like her chin right here, she has a little blemish right here. So the heel tool may not work for this particular point because it's blending in and removing that hard edge. So in this case, the clone tool will work better. All right, I'm not going to retouch the entire image. Now that you know how to apply and use the heel and clone tool, you can practice that later on. All right, let's go ahead and create a new layer now. I'm gonna click right here. Let's call it lipstick and fill it with transparency. Let's grab a color for the lipstick. I'm gonna use this dark red color. Grab your bucket fill tool with shift plus B. Click to fill in that layer with that color. Now, don't worry, it's just gonna be on the lips, but first we need to apply a layer mask to give us a hand with that edit. So let's make sure we have black selected and click add and that removes that color edit. So black removes white adds and then come over here to your foreground color and background color and click right here to change the colors to black and white. But we want to paint with white now because white adds. I'm going to grab my zoom tool and zoom in real close on our lips here. And I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool with the letter P. Now I'm just going to paint around the edges of her lips and it's not going to be perfect. I just want to get around and then I will fill it in once I have that done. Now it doesn't really look like lipstick right now because we are using a solid color. So to fix that, we need to apply a blending mode to this layer other than the default, which is normal. So let's go ahead and do that now before we fill it in. So we're gonna change this to soft light and boom, it's now blending in and it's starting to look like some makeup or some lipstick, I should say. 
I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the rest. And of course, if you make a mistake and go outside, you can press the letter X to switch the foreground color to black, and then you can paint with black to remove. Press X again to get white to the foreground, and then you can paint that color back in. Okay, I'm gonna go back to black here again, just to touch up the lips right around here. It's kind of hard to tell if that's part of her lip or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill it in and see if it looks awkward or uneven. And it does, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo that with Commander Control plus the letter Z. All right, the lips are now done. Let's go ahead and grab our zoom tool. I'm holding down my control key so I can zoom out. And let's add some blush next. So let's create a new layer again. Let's call it blush. Fill it with transparency. And then for the color, I'm gonna use this color right here. If you wanna use the same color, here is the hexadecimal number to type in right here. Okay, let's go ahead and fill it in with our bucket fill tool. We're gonna add a black layer mask again. And this time we're going to change the mode to multiply. All right, let's grab our paintbrush tool again. And then in the tool options, let's adjust our opacity to around 20. And this will allow us to build up the blush slowly versus applying it all at once. Make sure your foreground color is set to white again so you can add that color into the area where it needs to go. So full disclosure, I've never put makeup on before. So if it looks horrific, then I apologize because I'm not a makeup artist. But if you are, or if you know how to put on makeup, you'll probably do a better job than I do. All right, let's go ahead and begin applying the blush. And I'm just clicking and dragging across her cheek here to apply that blush. Now it's pretty intense right now and it's a little bit too much. So we can go back with black and then begin removing it as needed. Or what you can do is you can lower the opacity of that layer so it's not as intense. So I'm not sure if I'm doing a really good job. You can let me know in the comments there what you think. But again, that is way too dark, I think. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this opacity down. Let's keep going, maybe right around 50. So something nice and subtle. I'm gonna drop my opacity and just fill it in just a little bit more along the edges, just to kind of blend it in a little bit more. Now, we could probably see a little bit of the blush on this side as well. So I'm gonna zoom in here and use a smaller brush in this area and just paint it in very lightly right around this area here. All right, hold down your control key, shift plus the letter J to zoom all the way out. So I'm not liking the blush. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint with black a little bit more so I can remove it. It's a little bit too much. So again, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this and make it perfect. All right, before and after. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Not bad for somebody that's never done makeup, wouldn't you agree? All right, let's work on some eyeshadow now. So we need a new layer once again, and let's call it eyeshadow. And we're gonna go back and add another black layer mask. Let's grab our color here. Actually, I wanna scroll down here and select a color from her shirt. So I'm gonna click right here to get the eyedropper tool. Once I click on that area, it's going to select that color. Now here's the color that I used previously and you can add that color or the color that you select here by clicking on this arrow. I'm gonna grab this color here because I want that instead. All right, I'm gonna scroll back up, back to the paintbrush tool. And actually we need to fill that in, don't we? So let's go back to our bucket fill tool with shift plus B. Fill it in. Make sure you have your thumbnail preview selected and not the layer mask. Otherwise, it won't fill it in. Go back and click on your layer mask to select it to make sure you are working on that part of the layer. All right, we can now begin painting with white to add that eyeshadow. Now, I do have my opacity set pretty low here. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in 
and grab my brush again and paint with black. Need to set the foreground color. Looks like I went inside of her eye a little bit here. I'm gonna increase the opacity to 100 so I can work a little bit faster here so we can get to the next step once we're done here. All right, back to white and we're just gonna put this on there real thick. Okay, so we're going to change our blending mode here. I'm just gonna fill in this area here like so. Let's change that now and let's set it to multiply. It's a little bit too dark, so I'm gonna drop the opacity down to right around 70 or so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and continue filling in that eyeshadow. Again, never done eyeshadow before, so not quite sure if this is how it's supposed to look, but you get the idea. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and take a look. I'm gonna add a little bit more inside of here, I think. And I'm just going to touch up over here a little bit. A little bit too much over here, probably. I'm just going to tone this down a little bit. All right, we'll go with that. You get the idea. We just need to add a little bit on the other eye now. I'm gonna drop the opacity down so I can just put a little bit up here and a little bit down here as well. All right, so there is the before and the after. Now, the cool thing is you can come over here and grab the preview layer here, and you can fill it in with a new color if you don't like the color that you started with. So maybe we want red. So let's try that. It's a little bit darker than red, so I'm gonna drop the opacity down just a little bit. You can also change the blending mode to something else to see if that works better. That looks a little creepy, I think, so I'm gonna go back by undoing that with Commander Control plus the letter Z. Maybe soft light would be better than multiply. Nope, that looks creepy too. So I'm gonna go back to multiply. All right, so the eyeshadows are now done. So let's now work on her eyelashes by making them a little bit darker. And we're going to fill this in with black to get us started. Let's add a black layer mask again. And let's zoom in really close. Now her eyelashes are pretty short here and there's not a whole lot of them. This other eye though, they're much longer and we can definitely see those eyelashes a little bit better. So we're going to darken up what's here and I'll show you how to add some eyelashes if you want. So let's paint with white with our paintbrush tool in this area to begin applying that black in this area. Now it's definitely too dark. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop the opacity. So maybe something like right around 25. I'm gonna go around the eye just a little bit. That's too much. So I just wanna darken it up a little bit. Now, if you wanna add eyelashes, what you need is a brush like this one here, Bristles 01 that has some bristles on it and it's not a solid brush like we had previously. We're gonna create a new layer here just to test it out. I'm gonna make that brush even smaller and then just click and drag to create those eyelashes. Now, that doesn't look real, so you have to have a steady hand to do that, but you wanna make sure that you're clicking and dragging up and then of course you can drop that opacity down to blend in that color a little bit so it looks more realistic. Now it's gonna take some practice to get those eyelashes to look natural. You can also maybe find some other brushes online like this one here where it's one single lash. And then once you click, it's going to look a little bit more realistic than that other brush that I was using. The only problem is you're going to be adding one eyelash at a time. Now, the other thing is this eyelash is curved the wrong way. It should be the opposite. So we need to adjust our angle for this brush in order to get it to match the angle or the perspective of her eye. So we can change the aspect ratio and the angle 
until we get the eyelash angle that we need. Now, of course, that's a little bit too big. So now we can paint on some eyelashes like this and you would go in with different size brushes to continue adding in additional eyelashes all the way across. So I'll leave that up to you to practice. It's gonna take a lot of practice to make it look as natural as possible. Or if you just wanna darken up what's already there, you now know how to do it by adding a new layer and adjusting the opacity. I'm gonna go back to my other brush here because I do need to do the other eye now. And then of course we need to paint with white to paint in this area to make those eyelashes darker. Now the eyelashes here are getting really thin. So you may need to come in with a smaller sized brush to make sure you're applying that edit on the eyelashes and not on the background as well. Let's go ahead and zoom back out again. And the next thing we're going to work on is some hair highlights. Now, because she has very bright hair, there's not a whole lot of highlighting we can do, but I'm gonna give you some tips on how you can highlight hair in general, which will be better for darker hair. So let's call this hair highlighting. We're gonna fill it with transparency. We're gonna grab a color that is similar to what she has now. So something very bright, maybe a little brighter right about there. So I'm gonna choose a brighter brightness level from her hair to be used for the highlighting. I'm not just going to randomly pick a color. I want it to match the color of the highlights that she already has. Let's go ahead and fill it in and add a black mask. Okay, now with a fairly large brush, I'm just going to paint over different parts of her hair here. And I'm gonna try and keep that brush stroke in the same direction that her hair is going in. And of course, we need to change the blending mode. Let's change it to soft light and let's drop the opacity. I'm also gonna drop the opacity of my brush as well so I can paint in smaller amounts of that adjustment. So just some basic highlights here and there just to add a little bit more depth to her hair. Okay, let's take a look at the before and after. It's a little bit too bright still, so I'm gonna drop that opacity down even more. Just wanna make it subtle and again, to add some depth. Okay, let's zoom out with Control, Shift, plus J. All right, let's add a little bit of contrast and do some color grading. So I find the image to be a little flat right now. So let's grab our retouch layer and duplicate it. And let's call it Contrast plus color grade. So for this, I'm gonna go up to colors and select curves to apply an S curve. So I'm just gonna drag the highlights up just a little bit and I'm gonna drag the shadows down just a little to create kind of an S curve along that linear line. Now, of course, the further you go on either side, the more contrast you're going to add. So that's why I'm just doing a subtle amount because I don't want it to be overpowering. So let's check out the before and the after. And I think that adds a little bit of pop to the image by adding a subtle amount of contrast. Let's go into the channel value here and select green. What I wanna do is add a touch of red in the highlights. So I'm gonna click right here to apply an anchor so that this part of the linear line doesn't move. And dragging up adds green, dragging down adds magenta. So again, I'm just going to do a subtle amount of adjustment here to add just a little bit of that magenta in the highlights. Now let's go into the blue value and add a touch of yellow to warm up the image just a little bit. So let's click in the center and drag down to add yellow. That's too much. I just want a touch of it to warm up the image just a little bit. That might be too much still. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this up just a little bit more. So right about there. So before and after. A little too yellow still. So I'm gonna increase this just a little bit. And to see the before and after, we're gonna hold down our shift key and click on this icon right here. There's the before 
and the after. How cool is that? All right, to continue elevating your editing skills with GIMP, make sure to check out that playlist right there. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.